All right, now let us find the Sicha of the Rebbe. Here we go. <clears throat> <clears throat> we'll learn a sicha of the Rebbe <clears throat> in Gimel. We were learning this beautiful sicha in Aleph. What does it mean, Lech Lecha? <clears throat> if you remember, and why uh, God chose Yitzchak over Abraham, and we said that Yitzchak is over, over Yishmael, I'm sorry. <laughs> Yitzchak over Yishmael that Abraham had two sons. One was Yitzchak and one was Yishmael. And the Rebbe pointed out that Yishmael's mother was the, the, the really pedigree and her attitude was the best. And she was even called Ketorah because her actions were like the incense of the Holy Temple. <clears throat> and never, and, and, and she made tremendous sacrifices just to be a, a servant in the house of Abraham. She was a princess. And, but nevertheless, Yitzchak was better. And the Rebbe brings two reasons why. Reason number one, because Yitzchak's birth was miraculous. And number two, Yitzchak was circumcised when he was eight days old. Above understanding. Yishmael, his birth was more or less normal. That's why Sora said, Get, take Hagar, said to Abraham, take Hagar, she can have children. I can't have any children. So his birth was normal. And his circumcision was when he was 13 years old, and he did it with intellect. He did it with understanding. And the Rebbe says, that's the essence of a Jew. A Jew has to <clears throat> realize that everything is miracles. You should not be self-reliant. You have to rely also on the Creator. The Creator wants us to do everything on our own. True, but we have to rely on the Creator. Realize it's all miracles. And number two, you have to serve God above understanding. Can't be with your understanding. No matter how self-sacrificing you are, if it's like Ishmael, and it depends on your okay then that's not Judaism. Judaism means you have to do things that are against your benefit, against your understanding. Things which logically will not bring you into the world to come and it won't give you any benefit, like Abraham sacrificing his son. Okay, but that we'll talk about next week. Now let's learn a little bit about the circumcision, Adam, Abraham's circumcision. Let's see if we can find this, where this is. Parshat, let's go a little bit back. Okay. One more. Okay, let's do it then. Here we go. So the first one was the Rebbe said that the mitzvah of Mila <coughs> of circumcision was the first mitzvah that God gave to actually to the world. A physical commandment. He gave it to Abraham. The first physical one. And like we said, that it's above understanding, above <clears throat> logic. And this was the covenant that was given to Abraham. Brismila. From this, this is now the second sicha. From this, which God had decided that he was going to give the commandment of Mila. Is this being? No, it's not being. Oh, I'm sorry. sorry. Excuse me. Yeah. From this, that God decided that He was going to give this commandment of Mila. <clears throat> so this should be a sign for us. Maisa Avos Simon Labanim. This should give us a power to all the commandments that we do. 
that it's understandable that in this mitzvah, there must be hinted at something which is so general that it applies to all the commandments and the, and the commandment of Mila. And let's understand what it is. The Rambam writes in the book Moin Nebuchim, uh, Guide to the Perplexed. <clears throat> says the Rebbe, there are a lot of things which are written in the Guide to the Perplex, which the foundation comes from the Zohar and Kabbalah. From this, the Rebbe learns that the, the Rambam, Maimonides, learned Kabbalah also. Now, one of the reasons for the commandment of Mila is in order to weaken the desire and pleasure which is connected to that limb. And this is a general thing in all the commandments. Generally, the commandments are there in order to refine the creation. Ois edlin, another word for making, refining. Also the physical body, so that it won't have so much desire and pleasure in physical things. And the pleasure will be in holiness. Okay, like we said, lech lecha mi artzecha mi blanatecha. One of the biggest impediments <coughs> to Judaism is <coughs> um, how do you say imbalance? Imbalance. God wants us to be in the world, but not too much in the world. God wants us to eat, but not too much. Don't eat too much. God wants us to have pleasure in the world, but not too much pleasure. Don't go overboard. <clears throat> and generally, it's not too, not good to overdo anything. The Rambam says the only thing that is good to have, if you want to call it too much of an excess of, is humility. Humility is always a good thing. In other words, let, let God take over things. Sometimes you have to be assertive, true. But it's better to be, to overdo humility than to overdo assertiveness. Right? It's, it's better to overdo, um, how, how do you say, <clears throat> being open than to overdo being closed and sure of yourself, certain of yourself. Right? Sometimes being certain of yourself is the biggest enemy of mankind. Being certain of yourself is a good thing, no doubt about it. But to overdo it, it's disaster. On the other hand, humility is also a good thing, and overdoing it is not so much of a disaster. Not so much of a disaster. But it's true, when a person has a chance, he sees something wrong, and but he says, who am I to do a thing like that? Who am I to buy a pair of nice to fill in? Okay, that's in the wrong place. True. That's it. But generally speaking, not. He <clears throat> says, what, what am I talking about this before? For one of the biggest things that brings a person to false certainty is the pleasures of this world. Like I say, God wants us to to get pleasure from the world. You should eat tasty food. You should look nice. You should, right? There's a lot of things that are connected with pleasure. It's good to have pleasure to see your children grow up, right? <clears throat> to, have, to laugh, to be happy, to dance. Those are wonderful things. But to overdo it is a bad thing. To think that that's the purpose of life, to have pleasure and to, 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 to get to be successful and, the, and my family, that's the whole purpose of life. That's not so. Abraham showed us. He was willing to throw away everything. That's the basis of Judaism. Everything, even family. God forbid we should ever be put to such a situation like that, but that's the truth. And that's so what happens? The world can sometimes really, really trick us. And that's what addictions are. A person does something and he just can't stop doing it. And he just looks so forward to that pleasure that anything else is just torture for him just to sit in his house and be calm and be with his family. It's just torture, but he just is looking forward to that next drink or that next, you know, gambling, whatever he does, has to have it. So that's what it means. One of the first steps in serving God is to get rid of our attachment, our over-attachment to pleasure. And that's one of the purposes of bris milah. Says the Rebbe, bris milah, the bris, that's a general commandment for all the commandments. All the commandments are there in order to, ref to refine us. In addition to what we said before, the connection to Mila, to, 
circumcision to all the commandments, there are also certain details from the mitzvah that they, <coughs> which they signify general things in the service of man. And let's, let's learn another thing from Brismila, which is relevant to all, all of our lives, especially the way we serve God. In the mitzvah of Mila, there are, like we said before, three aspects. Number one, the actual doing circumcision, right? <clears throat> right, there's a circumcision. You, you bring a, a mohel and you circumcise the child. Number two is that a Jew is circumcised. And there was, there's the action that the circumciser does. Then there's the receiver, that he is circumcised. This lasts so long. The action is only one time. That a person is circumcised, that's his whole life. He remains. And number three is that he is not an oral, that he is not uncircumcised. So there's, there's a positive aspect of circumcision, that now I am in this covenant with God. And then there's the negative aspect. I took away the foreskin that divided between me and God. An orel means a person that has a foreskin. <clears throat> this dividing of the mila into these three facets is not just a, you know, a philosophical nice idea, but this is actually practical. How is it practical? <clears throat> That every single, every single law that we do, for instance, let, we can learn this from, from Brismila. Namely, there's the action, there's the result of the action, and there's also the removal of obstacles to that action. Three things. Let's see how this relates in, in law. If a person was born with no foreskin, circumcised. There are cases like that. It says Moses was like that. So then there already are by him two things. Number one, the last two, he is circumcised and he is removed by birth. The obstacle to being circumcised, his foreskin is removed. He was born without a foreskin. What's lacking by a person like this just the action of circumcision. So it says a person like that, if he's born uncircumcised, or there's also a, a case of like this is a, a, a convert. In, in America, for instance, other places, they say that circumcision is healthy. So they make a circumcision on the child for health reasons, for health reasons. So let's say that's a non-Jew and he decides that he wants to convert. Now he converts and he's already circumcised. He already says, yes, but he didn't do the, the actual mitzvah. So therefore they have to do what's called hatafat dambrit. Uh, they, they, they make a, a small cut in the, the lower part of the, the, the this. In any case, they take a little drip, drop of blood. They make a, a small cut and they make a drop of blood. When a, the person, that's, that's one case. In other words, it could be that a person is only lacking one thing, the action of circumcision. If a person is already circumcised and afterwards he does opposite to being circumcised, it says, Mashach Arlasol. It says that this was a common thing in Greece in the time of the of Hanukkah. The Greeks, as you know, worshiped the body, human body. It was a very big thing by them, the human body. And they had all this promiscuity and this stuff, but also the, the body, especially. They, you see these statues over there of uh, you know, the discus throw or whatever. So they, they worship the body, the symmetry of the body. And they used to have these uh, Olympic games that they used to have, sports. They were really big at sports. I don't think they were, they were like bloodthirsty, like the Romans, you know, fighting lions, but I don't know. In any case, they used to have a big thing with sports and they used to perform naked. Used to perform naked. Well, you know, there were some Jews that also wanted to, to get into the to the uh, <clears throat> into the the contest, and you know they learned to be discus throwers and whatever it is and decathlon. This is, but they were circumcised, 
And it wasn't nice, you know, they'd go out and the whole crowd would say, hey, look at this. So they would do mashach ar They would, what's called, pull the skin up and have it sewed above in the place so that it would be like the oil was back again. A person that did a thing like this <clears throat> means that he, he did have circumcision, he was circumcised, but the last two are missing. What air is oich nit kain oral? And no, and, and sorry, the first one and the last one are there. He had a circumcision when he was eight days old. And also, he's not uncircumcised, he was circumcised. Right? Because therefore, it says that there's certain laws. If a person does this, a coin, he can eat too much. There's a person that has no, that is uncircumcised, and he can't uh, eat truma. But he can if he's a coin. But all that's lacking by him is <clears throat> that he is not circumcised. In other words, is the act was done of circumcision to this person when he was eight. And his foreskin was removed. Now what did he do? He just did something that it is that now he is, in fact, not circumcised. Now he's not circumcised. He made a new oil for himself. So like we said before, like the Rambam says, that he is mafir briso shel Abraham Avinu, that he denies the covenant of Abraham. Okay, what's this got to do with our with our life? We'll see. If a person is born with two orlas, sometimes people have they're born with two orlas. As it is, a person is born with what's called a an orla, and there's a, there's a mila, and then there's a thin orla that has to be taken off of. Right? They have to do mila and priya, it's called. But what if a person is born with two orlas? There's two foreskins. <clears throat> and he was circumcised, but they only cut one of them. So by him, he had the action of mila was done. It was he was circumcised. They, they cut off the... But... And he is also, we have to say, he is circumcised. But what's missing is that he still remains an oral because he still has a, 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 a there was the, the mitzvah of oral, of a meal, you have to re remove one foreskin. That's all you have to do. One for this person had two. It's, it's, a, it's a, a freak thing that happened, but the mitzvah he did, he removed one. As soon as he did that, then this person, he's circumcised. The action was done, number one. Number two, he is circumcised. But what's missing is, is that it's he's not, he hasn't removed totally the orla. It's just missing the last one. Okay. So that's what he wants to say. There's just to, to point out, to bring home that there's these three aspects of Mila. <clears throat> so in these previously mentioned three details from Mila, this is also hinted at in general the service of man to God. Just like in mitzvahs mila, there has to be the action, the deed. You have to bring someone to actually bring a knife and actually do the circumcision. Un from ear, and also it has to come out to results. Namely, that the child remains circumcised, and also that he is not uncircumcised. His, his foreskin is removed. So the good is done and the bad is removed. Azoi, also in general, the service of man, Torah and commandments, you have to do three things. And then we'll come out. First of all, you have to do the action. You have to be, the action has to be continual. And also it has to be that you don't go back to do bad. Let's see. Moral, a person that's circumcised means this is doing good. That he should... He should remove, and he should she would reveal, uh, the 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 good, which is by a Jew, revealing the good. That's the action, of doing circumcision. And his own good should be expressed, <clears throat> by himself himself. <clears throat> in thought, in speech, 
and action, and they would see the good in others and reveal the good in yourself. And this should be revealed in action, speech, and thought, namely learning Torah and doing the commandments actually. That's the deed. And now <clears throat> it means actually doing it day-to-day -day life, whether in regarding to another Jew, <clears throat> to say good things and to make another Jew aroused his Judaism, feel positive as much as is possible. Okay, that's what it means, number one, that you have to do it, and it has to remain that way. So you have to, first of all, reveal the good. That's the action of bris milah. You're revealing the good, and it has to be continual, constant. Then we said the third thing is, is that you have to re you have to be not with a foreskin, not uncircumcised. This means turning from bad. This means avoiding bad things, <clears throat> not to be uncircumcised. Namely what? When a person is uncircumcised means that he's covered over by the foreskin. You're, uh, you're under the rulership of the Yetzir Hora. It's a very interesting thing, isn't it, that people, at least in Judaism, are created imperfect. They're created whole, 100% whole. They have, this, and they have to be. You have to do an operation. Interesting. The child is born. Eight days. Leave him alone. Let him be natural. Let him do. No. Eight days old. You have to bring a knife, and you have to cut off his foreskin. That's that's the covenant of the Jewish people. Says the Rebbe, that implies three things. Number one, you have to do, you have to do good. Number two, you have to maintain it. And number three is you have to not go back into bad. Not having any bad desires, lusts, not bad thoughts, not things that he was. <clears throat> that's what Mila is cutting off the thick selfishness that you have. And also, not any very delicate, fine desires, right? Let's just take a simple example, very, very common example, right? A Jew, he doesn't know anything about Judaism. He's who knows where in Amsterdam somewhere doing the most obnoxious, terrible things, the opposite of Judaism, the opposite of humanness. And, he, this, and one day, all of a sudden, he realizes, wow, oh, oh, I'm a Jew. You know, what am I doing? I'm messing this messing my whole life up. I only have one life. What am, what am I living like an animal for? And he says, that's it. He becomes a Baal And someone tells him you're doing the wrong. He gets all angry at them. And he says, oh, I got, I got to control myself. And so he fixes himself up. And he says, I'm not going to get angry. He read, reads in a book that getting angry is like serving idols and having desires. Look where it took me. It took me to these terrible places. Forget about listening to my impulses and my this. And now he makes it, he's a religious Jew. It happens to be as a good understanding. He can understand the Torah and he enjoys it and everybody praises him and this, this, right? And now there he is. He's got tzitzes on, he's got a big beard and everything. But once in a while, he gets angry. Or once in a while when it's money involved as he has a little bit of lust or he has, he gets a little bit jealous of somebody else. Oh, I've worked so hard. Here, this person just comes yesterday and he gets the position. And all of a sudden, you start to fall into the same thing, but it's in a much finer way. It's a much more refined way. And especially because you're already used to sort of checking yourself out. You know, you've already corrected, you know it's possible to change yourself. So you change, but you can't do it. You know it's possible to do, what do you do? Make excuses. Ah, look at this person, look at that. He has them, I have the money, he took from me, he got me, he did this, I did that. So it says you have to remove not only the thick foreskin, but also the thin foreskin that's underneath. That's called Priya. And the Tanya in, 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 in Gersh Kodesh he has, he talks about the levels of love of God, that there's the inner, deeper level of God that only Mashiach will reveal. He'll do the Priya. Okay, but nevertheless, we have to do what we can. So therefore, that's the Mitzvah Mila. <clears throat> this is even a person that's born circumcised. Nevertheless, 
he still has to work with himself. He has to do this. He has to take a drop of the blood of Mila. Similarly, it is in serving God. And the altar, Rebbe, the first Rebbe in the Tanya, <coughs> writes in the Tanya that a person <coughs> that has naturally likes to learn Torah and he is naturally has a very calm right, personality. There's people like that. They're very studious. The world doesn't affect them so much. Nothing makes them angry. So therefore, he does all the good things naturally. That's like a person who's born circumcised. <clears throat> also, by his nature, he is a cold person. He's cold. What does he mean he's cold? He's cool. He doesn't get excited about things. You show him uh, some money. Eh, no, I'll take it or leave. It doesn't make it. He's a cold person, naturally. He, he can just sit and learn the whole day. <clears throat> by him, it's okay. Maybe take a little walk around the day. That's also nice. So a person like that, so he doesn't really do any bad things, right? He's not, it says he, he's, he's the, he got the third thing. Therefore, the, namely that he hasn't got a, a foreskin. <clears throat> Nevertheless, he has, is called, he's not serving God. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Nevertheless, a person like this, that he's naturally, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> naturally inclined to do Torah and to do the commits and to do the commandments. And he's not an excitable person. He's not an emotional and excitable person. And so what's missing by this person? He's not really serving God. A person has to have effort. A person has to change his nature. It has to do more than what is nature. Like it says, you have to love God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your might. A person would think, listen, loving God, uh, who loves God? What are you talking about? You know, there's God. I believe in God. It's enough. It's, no, no, you have to love him. You have to be emotional. So you start really working on it. You say, wow, you know, I, I really realize how great God is, how good God is. I love God. You love him with all your heart? Listen, you know, a little bit. With all your heart. Come on. And he learns more chasidut than he really tries and he works. That's it. I love God with all my heart. I have his tremendous Love of Hashem all the time. Okay, that's step number one. Now, step number two, you have to love God with all of your soul. What does that mean? So it says that means you always have to go <clears throat> a little bit deeper than your nature. You should never be satisfied spiritually with where you are. <clears throat> this is also by a person what? <clears throat> that by him is <clears throat> turning from bad and doing good. This is now acquired by him. He does it because he did it yesterday. Like I told you the story about the Balchuva, right? He already worked on himself. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> he's not going to do any stupid things anymore. <clears throat> but now, while he's already into the level that he is used to it, used to serving God, it becomes second nature. So this person also, he can't be <clears throat> complacent. You always have to be working and serving Hashem. Now it's not enough. You always, it's not enough that you did circumcision in the past. You removed the foreskin. It has to be constant. He has to work constantly and changing his nature in order to serve God in a deeper way. This is relevant to every single Jew in the world. <clears throat> Good. Now I will tell you Oh, we were going to learn Yom Yom, by the way. So I just signed out. Oh, no. Oh, no. What happened? Why? Why? When did this stop? Oh. Hello, does anybody hear me? I don't understand what's going on here. With you. Are you hear me? Oh, because I got a sign that says it stopped. Did, did, did it stop, really? Did the class stop? No. Oh, good. All right. 
Well, that's good because I've got a big sign here that says you're signed off. You're signed in. Okay, I couldn't understand. <clears throat> All right, I'd like to just do yom yom. For some reason, my picture is gone and I can't return to the meeting. Why not? I don't know why. All right, <laughs> thanks for the messages. I don't know what it means. Okay. It says everything is working. I just don't understand. Okay, let's just do it and we'll just we'll have to figure out. And we can't understand everything in the world. Here we are now in <clears throat> the month of Cheshvan. What's the date today? Today is what? <clears throat> Yud Cheshvan, Tes Cheshvan. What's the date? Sorry. Oh, yom yom. Today is Yud Cheshvan, right? Yud Mar Cheshvan, right? There's a book called Yom Yom, and these are sayings from the previous Lubavitcher Rebbe, which were connect, gathered by the Rebbe. <clears throat> <clears throat> the first Rebbe used to say about Atzilut, when he would be writing Chassidut, he would say Atzilut, he would call it Eben, above. We said that, let's maybe stop the share, maybe that's the problem, here we go. Oh, that was my problem. Now I see, okay. The Alter Rebbe, the first Rebbe, when he would write about the four worlds, As Asiya, Yetzira, above that is Bria, when he would write Atzilut, he would call it, he wouldn't call it by its, its he would call it even, means above. And we said that when he would write Maimorim, it would be, he would really be there. And he wouldn't be able to write the whole world at Silut. He would just write Aleph, Tzadik, Yud. He couldn't finish any more than, than that. What's that? What happened? It turned. Oh. <clears throat> It turned. Um, and so this, uh, this, it'll be next week, will be the birthday, Chav Mar will be the birthday of the Rebbe Rashab. <clears throat> about the Rebbe Rashab. So I will tell you a story about the Rebbe Rashab. That's right. Ten. Thank you. <clears throat> So the Rebbe Rishab. <clears throat> the Rebbe Rishab, when he was a, a, a young boy, he his brother was taller than he was. His brother was also older than he was. And there was one time when he <clears throat> they played a game and he there was a hole and he told his brother to stand in the hole. And <clears throat> he stood next to him and he said, see, I'm taller than you. So his father was the Rebbe Marash, took him aside and said that the way to make yourself taller than someone else is not by lowering the other person. It's by elevating yourself. And there's a similar story that's told that on Passover in Chabad, we have a custom of <clears throat> right in the beginning of the loyal Seder, we, they, there's yachats. You break the middle matzah into two, and <clears throat> you uh, from that you take the afikoman. You make the afikoman. So in Chabad we have the custom that you break the matzah into two, and the bigger piece you break into five, and then you put it you, you put it in a bag or something. You use that afikoman. We don't hide the afikoman in Chabad. So the previous Lubavitcher Rebbe, when he was just a boy, he was by his father, the Rebbe. Rashab, Rabbi Shalom Dober, and the night of the Seder, and he broke the middle matzah, the, 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 the uh, previous Rebbe, when he was just a boy, he broke the middle matzah, and he held the matzah up to see which piece was bigger, because the bigger piece, that's when you're supposed to break into five. And his father said to him, big, that you have to measure it to see if it's big, is not really big. In other words, a great person 
is not great and comparable to others. A great person is a person that he <clears throat> is faithful to his values and faithful to Hashem. That's what makes him great because Hashem is great. That's my explanation. The simple what he said is great that you have to measure it to see if he's great is not really great. In other words, keep your eyes on the goal and not on others, unless it's in order to help them. Have a good day, everyone. See you at 3 o'clock. 3 o'clock, you're all invited. We learn Chumash with Meforshim. We learn with uh, Rashi, and we learn with the Ramban, and the Kli Yaker, and uh, Rabbein Rebbechaya ben Asher. We learn, <clears throat> and also the Malbim. Right, we, uh, and today, God willing, we're going to learn about... Uh, See that we learned about the war yesterday. Oh, we're going to learn about the vision of Abraham, the vision that God gave to Avram, and He promised him the land of Israel, and uh, that the, Jew the Jewish people were going to go to the exile. Amazing, amazing, mind-boggling <clears throat> uh, chapter of the Torah. We we'll learn today three o'clock, and after that we learned that for half an hour, and after that we learned the laws of Shabbat, Shin Yud Chet, and after that another half an hour, and then we learn Mishnah. Makot. So everyone's invited. Have a good day. God bless you. And hope to see you. Thanks.